prehistoric Australia, a land where the most normal spiders grow as big as your laptop screen. Snakes are seen swallowing crocodiles whole, and even something as harmless as a pine cone can kill you. Australia is home to all the scary things that will make you scream, holy cow! Pretty much every animal there is dangerous. In fact, it would be easier to list the non-dangerous animals. So here we go. Quakas. That's about it, really. But even with quaggas, you are in danger of being loved to death. So, proceed with caution. From venomous snakes to ferocious crocodiles, octopuses, and disgustingly overgrown earthworms, the Great Southern Land truly has it all when it comes to nightmare fuel and creepy crawlies. Despite all this, Australia today is a cakewalk compared to what it was just 50,000 years ago. You can imagine prehistoric Australia was a scene straight out of a Jurassic Park movie, but down under. And the Varanus priscus is the perfect example why. Better known as the Megalania, this was a massive monitor lizard and a close relative of the Komodo dragon, which also had its roots in Australia before spreading to nearby islands. This giant lizard could reach lengths of up to 23 feet or 7 meters, making it one of the largest reptiles to have ever existed. And here's a fun or perhaps terrifying fact. Megalania only went extinct around 50,000 years ago. This means the first humans to reach Australia probably saw these enormous lizards up close and personal. This is why you shouldn't feel too adventurous when you're in Australia, because you can end up coming face to face with a lizard the size of a small bus. Megalania was considered one of the apex predators of Pleistocene Australia, which essentially means it ruled the territory with an iron claw. It probably ate whatever it wanted, from large mammals to other reptiles, and maybe even the occasional adventurous human who got too close. But let's not leave out the impressive features that made Megalania such a formidable predator. With its strong, muscular build, it could easily overpower its prey. Its long, sharp claws and powerful jaws were perfect for catching and devouring a variety of animals. And being closely related to the Komodo dragon, it might have even had venomous saliva, making its bite extra deadly. Despite its fearsome reputation, Megalania played a crucial role in its ecosystem keeping the populations of other animals in check and maintaining a balance in the food chain. Its presence was a constant reminder of the raw power and unpredictability of nature. For the early humans and other creatures sharing its habitat, Megalania would have been the stuff of legends, an enormous, almost mythical beast that roamed the land. And so, this giant lizard is exactly what we mean when we say prehistoric Australia was pure nightmare fuel. It isn't alone in earning the continent its terrifying reputation, though. The marsupial lion was an even shadier killer. Also known as the thylacolio, this lion roamed the Aussie land from around 2 million to 45,000 years ago. This creature can be seen as what happens when a wombat or koala decides it prefers meat over plants. Equipped with highly specialized teeth and jaws that functioned like bolt cutters, it was perfectly designed for a meat-based menu. The marsupial lion likely had a unique hunting technique, dropping onto its prey from trees above. This earned it the nickname Drop Bear, a nod to its tree-dwelling ambush tactics. This strategy would have made it a terrifying surprise for any unsuspecting animal wandering below. Now, this lion may not have been exceptionally large, but it stood out as one of the top predators and the largest carnivorous mammal to roam Pleistocene Australia. This killing machine was a true marvel of nature, even by Australian standards. Again, what set it apart were its highly unusual teeth, more reminiscent of a rodent than a typical predator. Its oversized front incisors were its main weapons, used for gripping and tearing, while its blade-like carnassial premolars sheared through flesh and bone with precision. The strength of Thylacolio's jaws were equally impressive. A 220-pound or 99-kilogram thylacolio could deliver a bite force comparable to a modern lion weighing 550 pounds or 250 kilograms. This power allowed it to take down prey much larger than itself, despite being only around 5 feet or 1.5 meters long. Its tail, reinforced by strong muscles, provided crucial support during hunts, especially when tackling formidable prey like Diprotodon, 
or competing with other thylacolia males. Another unique feature for a marsupial was its retractable claws, a trait that kept its razor-sharp hooks sharp and provided superior grip on prey. Like today's leopards, thylacolio likely used its climbing ability to ambush prey from trees. It was supported by its specialized rear feet with reduced first toes and rough pads for enhanced grip, just like modern possums. Scientists believe it evolved from a herbivorous ancestor, possibly related to possums, or sharing a common lineage with wombats and koalas. That's a pretty rare evolutionary path for carnivorous mammals, which typically descend from meat-eating ancestors. Regardless of its origins, Thylacolio was a feared predator in Pleistocene Australia. Its ability to climb trees and launch surprise attacks made it a standout predator. This combination of arboreal stealth and ground-based power ensured it could take down sizable prey. Speaking of swift, Quicana was another horror that once inhabited Australia. It's a genus of land-dwelling crocodiles equipped with blade-like serrated teeth and long legs that made them incredibly fast hunters. These scary reptiles could reach lengths of about 20 feet or 6 meters, making them a significant presence in their environment. Interestingly, they might have survived slightly longer than Megalania, with evidence suggesting they could have existed until as recently as 10,000 years ago. This means that the first humans to set foot in Australia not only had to contend with gigantic lizards, but also had to keep an eye out for these terrifying crocodiles. Encountering a crocodile that didn't just lurk in the water, but actively roamed the land looking for its next meal doesn't sound fun. The sight of Quincana would have been enough to send shivers down the spine of any early human. Its formidable teeth were perfectly designed for slicing through flesh, making short work of its prey. As a top predator, it likely dined on a variety of large animals, keeping the balance of nature in check with its impressive hunting skills. And with such a fearsome reputation, it's no wonder that the name Quincana comes from the Aboriginal folklore, where Quincans are known as evil spirits. In addition to the terrifying land-dwelling crocodiles and massive monitor lizards, prehistoric Australia was also home to giant birds of prey, similar in size to the Hest's eagle from New Zealand. These formidable birds would have been capable of taking down large prey, including possibly even early humans. Among them was the Dinotoneus gaffi, the largest eagle ever to have lived in Australia. With its impressive wingspan and formidable talons, it would have been a dominant predator, capable of taking down large prey and soaring through the skies with an aura of unmatched authority. Another remarkable avian predator from this time was the Cryptogyps lysitosis, Australia's only known vulture. This scavenger played a crucial role in the ecosystem, cleaning up after other predators and ensuring that no part of a carcass went to waste. And let's not forget the huge flightless birds. If you think a cassowary is frightening, these ancient birds would make them look downright adorable in comparison. With powerful legs and a fierce demeanor, these gigantic avians were more than capable of defending themselves against predators and would have been a force to be reckoned with. Then there were the giant kangaroos. Unlike their modern hopping counterparts, these enormous marsupials had short flat faces and likely walked on two legs. Procoptodon galaya was the most extreme of these short-faced kangaroos. Even facing this guy would have been like meeting the Arnold Schwarzenegger of kangaroos. With its short, flat face and forward-facing eyes, it was always ready to scope out the next leafy branch to munch on. What really set this animal apart were its feet. Instead of the usual four toes, it sported a single, large toe on each foot, giving its footprints a superhero-sized impression. And those hands, each with two long-clawed fingers, were perfect for grabbing hard-to-reach snacks from the treetops. Then there was the creepy small Roma. Myolania, initially mistaken for a lizard due to its ornate skull adorned with spikes like a horned lizard, turned out to be one of the largest land turtles ever discovered. It's quite a confusion, isn't it? Scientists are still debating whether it belongs to the Cryptodera group, which tuck their necks under their spines, or the Pleurodera group, which bend their necks to the side. Myolania couldn't fit into either category due to its horn skull. Apart from its defensive headgear, Myolania sported a spike tail, likely used to fend off attackers from behind, much like the armored Glyptodons of South America during the Ice Age. 
various subspecies of this horned turtle existed, with some smaller ones found on islands off Australia's east coast, where creatures shrink in size over time on isolated islands. Unfortunately, these fascinating creatures disappeared from Australia and nearby islands about 2,000 to 3,000 years ago. Human activity, including hunting, is believed to have played a major role in their extinction. In places like Vanuatu, remains of Myolania have been discovered in ancient trash heaps, suggesting they were once hunted by early human settlers. Now, another ancient animal that shared a similar fate in Australia was the Tasmanian tiger. The thylacine, also known as the Tassie tiger, was a distinctive marsupial carnivore that inhabited Australia and Tasmania until recent times. Resembling a large striped dog with a pouch, it had a jaw-dropping appearance, characterized by a long snout, sharp teeth, and a powerful jaw. Legend has it that this creature had a jaw capable of opening wider than any other mammal. It was primarily nocturnal or semi-nocturnal, though it was also active during daylight hours. Its movements were described as slow and somewhat stiff, characteristic of its cautious and deliberate hunting style. Whether alone or in pairs, the thylacine typically hunted at night, utilizing its keen senses to stalk and capture prey. In terms of diet, they had a varied palate, preferring kangaroos and other marsupials, as well as small rodents and birds. With the arrival of European settlers, reports surfaced of the thylacine preying on sheep and poultry. However, the extent of this predation was likely exaggerated, perpetuated by noticeable photographs such as those by Harry Burrell, these images, whether intentionally or not, contributed to the belief that thylacines posed a significant threat to livestock, adding to their controversial reputation. But despite their suspected impact on livestock, thylacines mostly relied on native wildlife for sustenance. Theirs is a sad tale of human impact on wildlife. However, up to this point, the largest of the Australian megafauna to have ever been discovered on the continent is the Diprotodon, Often compared to a rhinoceros, this animal holds the title of Australia's largest known megafauna. This herbivorous giant stretched about 10 feet or 3 meters in length, stood 6.5 feet or 2 meters tall, and weighed a whopping 6,100 pounds or 2,767 kilograms, truly the heavyweight champion of marsupial mammals. Fossil finds scattered across Australia suggest it reigned supreme in size during its time. Initially, scientists thought there might be different diprotodon species due to size variations in fossils. However, further digging revealed that these differences likely reflected gender distinctions. Males tended to be larger, a common trend in the animal kingdom. Like its modern cousin, the wombat, diprotodon had toes designed for digging, although its colossal size probably limited its burrowing abilities. Instead, it likely used its claws to root out tasty roots and tubers. Its backward-facing pouch was a handy feature, keeping dirt out while it foraged. It's estimated these guys ate around 100 to 150 kilograms of plants every day, using its chisel-like incisors to dig up vegetation. But despite its impressive bulk, Diprotodon didn't have many predators until humans arrived in Australia around 60,000 years ago. Creatures like Megalania and Quincana were probably among the few that posed a threat. The mystery of Diprotodon's disappearance around 55,000 years ago continues to puzzle archaeologists. While human arrival is often blamed, climate change also played a role. As Australia drifted northward, it faced a drying trend that altered habitats and likely reduced food sources for Diprotodon. It's a classic case of survival in a changing world. Big creatures, big challenges, and a big mystery that keeps scientists guessing. In addition to the elephant-sized Diprotodon, Australia was also home to Thunderbirds. Genionis, known as the Jawbird, was among the last of the Thunderbirds to vanish from the Australian continent. It coexisted with early humans for about 15,000 years before its eventual extinction. Fossils found alongside human artifacts and cave paintings depicting flightless birds similar to Genionis support this timeline. Standing over 6.5 feet or 2 meters tall, and weighing around 550 pounds or 250 kilograms, this goose-like creature wasn't the largest bird in Australia, but it was certainly a notable presence. Debates among scientists continue regarding its diet, with many leaning towards it being a herbivore. 
However, some believe it might also have been a scavenger, given its stout wings, powerful legs resembling hooves, and a massive beak similar to a magpie goose, though much larger. As for where it lived, Genionus thrived across a wide range of habitats on the ancient island continent, favoring open forests and savanna grasslands. Pieces of its eggshells found in sand dunes indicate it likely nested in these areas. As Australia shifted towards a drier climate over time, these habitats became more arid, favoring species like the emu over the Genionus newtoni. This environmental change is probably what led to the gradual extinction of Genionus. Now, speaking of birds, we can't leave out the most terrible one. The moa, found in nearby New Zealand rather than Australia, has a fascinating story of extinction. There were 11 types of moa, and the biggest, Dinionus, or terrible bird, was like a giraffe in size, reaching up to 11 feet tall, or 3.5 meters. When humans first arrived in New Zealand about 700 years ago, the Maori found a land full of unsuspecting animals. Despite their size, Females were even bigger, towering over males by one and a half times, and weighing three times as much. Moa were gentle plant eaters, quiet and unafraid of these new two-legged predators. Living without natural land enemies, Moa had given up flying, and their feathers had changed into simpler, hair-like structures for warmth and waterproofing. Their huge eggs, a hundred times bigger than irregular hens, became a favorite food for the arriving humans who quickly developed a taste for both the eggs and the giant birds themselves. In just a hundred years after humans arrived, Moa disappeared forever, unable to protect themselves from this new threat. Proof of this fast extinction is found all over New Zealand, with Moa remains discovered in old trash heaps, likely food for the growing number of wild dogs called Curie that humans brought with them. These dogs, along with hunting by people and the use of fire to manage land, all played a part in the quick end of the moa. This is a clear example of how early humans helped make giant animals extinct all over the world during the last ice age. Since we've talked about New Zealand's largest herbivore, it's only fair to say a few words about its predator. Haast's eagle, also known as Harpajornis mori, was New Zealand's formidable predator that hunted the giant moa. With a wingspan stretching about 10 feet or 3.4 meters, and females tipping the scales at around 40 pounds, or 18 kilograms, this eagle wasn't the largest flyer around, but it packed a hefty punch for its size. Instead of gliding gracefully like other birds, Haast's eagle relied on speed and quick turns for its hunting strategy. It's quite surprising to imagine a 40-pound bird taking down a 550-pound mower, but Haast's eagle managed this feat with relative ease. Despite its smaller wingspan compared to its height, which suited it for maneuvering in forested areas, Haast's eagle used its massive feet and claws, comparable in size to a modern-day tiger's, to swoop down on moa. It would grip the moa's back and break its spine swiftly, often before the moa realized the attack was coming. With no other land predators to compete with, Haast's eagle could feast on its kill for several days. But alas, the fate of Haast's eagle mirrored its prey. Once humans arrived in New Zealand about six centuries ago, and made a hearty meal of moa and their giant eggs, the eagle's days were numbered. Without moa to hunt, this magnificent predator couldn't survive, fading into history not long after its massive prey. It's a reminder of how quickly things can change when humans enter the picture, even for the mighty creatures of the past. Finally, in order to properly end this list, we've decided to do so with a small, spiky creature, Zaglossus haketi. Zaglossus haketi was a quirky critter that adds a spiky twist to Australia's ancient animal roster. It wasn't the biggest beast around, but for a monotreme or egg-laying mammal, it was pretty impressive. At over 3 feet or 0.9 meters long and weighing about 65 pounds or 29.5 kilograms, today you can still find smaller versions of Zaglossus wandering around Australia and New Guinea. They're often called spiny anteaters even though they're not related to the ones in South America. Like its modern cousins, Zaglossus was covered in protective spines, making it a formidable creature in its time. Its hind legs were longer than its front ones, allowing it to stand upright and use its powerful claws for digging termite nests, a skill shared with today's echidnas. Its distinctive trumpet-like snout curved downward, 
and housed a sticky tongue measuring 1.7 feet or 0.5 meters long, ideal for slurping up termites, ants, and possibly other tasty invertebrates like grubs, beetles, and worms. Interestingly, archaeological finds reveal a surprising twist. Remains of Zaglossus alongside charcoal and burn marks suggest the ancient Aboriginal people may have regularly cooked and eaten these spiky anteaters. This culinary tradition is further supported by cave paintings depicting creatures resembling Zaglossus aketi, placing both humans and this unique monotreme in the same historical era. All of this is without even considering the many deadly species that still live in Australia today. Venomous snakes, dangerous spiders, and other lethal creatures already roamed the land alongside these prehistoric nightmares. The combination of these ancient beasts and the already perilous fauna would have made the first humans to arrive in Australia feel like they had truly walked through the gates of hell. Everywhere they turned, there would have been a new danger lurking. Whether it was a crocodile stalking through the underbrush, a giant bird of prey circling overhead, or a massive kangaroo striding through the grasslands, the early inhabitants of Australia faced an environment filled with creatures that seemed straight out of a nightmare. The sheer diversity and ferocity of these prehistoric animals highlight just how formidable and terrifying ancient Australia really was. Do you think prehistoric Australia was scarier than prehistoric Africa? Drop your thoughts in the comments below and we'll catch you in the next video.